Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescasebrace.com coming at you with a full case. All 12 box of 2023 Topps Chrome Platinum Anniversary Baseball. This is a 12, uh, pick your team five, pick your team five. I think we have some more. I'll post some more after this, uh, after this break. All right, big thank you to this group right here for making it happen on a true Tuesday the 28th. We filled this up straight up. I appreciate it. John picking up the Mets uh, for Last Spot Mojo. He's got the Yankees as well. Got all the New York teams. And let's pop this open. We're watching a little playoff basketball. It's been a close one. Look, it, oh, there's no tape right there. It looked like, it looked like uh, the Minnesota was going to win in Dallas. But Luca hit a clutch three and got the foul, but missed the free throw. So Dallas is down by three. 12.8 seconds left. Game four of the Western Conference Finals in 2024. No, they, they had to stop. They had to get that stop, but they're not. So Minnesota scores. They're up five now with 11.3 left. And now it's a two possession game. All right, Platinum Anniversary featuring the 1954 design. One chrome auto per box on average, I think. All card chip, a lot of fun stuff here. The variations are usually flipped around. And uh, this is kind of a long break, so. So hang in there, settle in with me. And Rain the Rangers games in overtime, Rangers Panthers. Rangers have been winning those winning those overtime games. Sometimes this is why I need a second TV in here. Well, Grizzlebees, I'll trust you to keep me posted on that. Rangers Panthers starting OT. Who's who's leading that series? Or is that tied one one? Is it tied one one? I think Rangers are up two one. Oh, Rangers up two one. Hey Jason, who's up on the Rangers series? Rangers up to one? Yeah. Okay. It is. Alright, Kyrie Bucket. No. No. Dish it! Dish it! Kyrie, to Kyrie. Shoot it! Shoot it! No. Oh no. It's the worst. I'm never playing this game again. We're all, we're out on underdog. We're all, out on underdog. Out on prize picks. Just needed one Kyrie bucket to hit a really simple three leg parlay. I'm sticking to I'm sticking to betting on baseball. How do my baseball picks do today? All right. Well, uh, Timberwolves, though, survive. Obviously, these are facsimile autographs. The live autos are in blue. Uh, there's Marischal. The numbers are down there to 499. That's going to go to the Giants. That'll be for Victor. And here's Tristan Houses, 16 out of 100. And there's our autograph, Kerry Carpenter, one of the last teams taken. 81 out of 199. Autograph for, for Barry and Detroit. Here's 
Here's a Lenyon Sosa, 193 out of 499. Hang on, sorry, I'm going to switch to the hockey game really quick. Minnesota wins 105-100, extending the series. Hockey must be on ESPN if this is a TNT game. Is it? It is. And no, and Florida just scored, so that game's over. 3-2, great. Now I can flip to... Yankees Angels because I know that's a live sporting event I've got a couple fantasy players on on the uh, on the Yankees and another autograph Kyle Stowers rookie auto for the O's I think he's having a nice season Joe Howard with the bonus auto Yankees up 3-2 I'll take a bonus auto. There's a Juan Soto. He's up to bat right now. This is Padres edition, 33 out of 75. This is going to go to Gary. Juan Soto's two for three today. Up to bat, 0 and 2 the count. Let's have a nice season. 315 average, 15 home runs, including a solo tonight. Single, two RBIs, almost 1,000 OPS, 46 RBIs. Woo! Contract year, but he strikes out in this at bat. Got Austin Hedges to 499. You can see the Tops logo back there. Those logo fractures are pretty cool. And then we got Adley Rushman, rookie card, and that checkerboard pattern. Nice. And Johnny Brito to 75. Those, uh, those checkerboard refractors not numbered. And of course, I will do a autograph and you know special card recap at the end. I was on Oakland today, got him. Got Minnesota today, got him. I don't know why I took the White Sox, but the White Sox are still playing? Oh, they're in a rain delay, but I don't think they're gonna win. They should just call that game at 7-2, bottom of the ninth. Um, I'm on the Angels. They're only down a run. I'm on Houston. They're up 2-1 at the end of the sixth. And I'm on uh, the, the Giants 0-0. Bottom of the sixth. Giants are being two hit, but Phillies haven't scored a run either. All right, so I got some games in play. Um, let's take a, let's whip around the league here. The Pirates-Tigers game was postponed. I don't know when they're redoing that, maybe tomorrow. Rangers beat the Diamondbacks 4-2. Corey Seager with a three-run homer. Dodgers got the Mets in both games of the doubleheader. Miguel Vargas hit his first homer of the season. Um, they beat the Mets 5-2 uh, in game one. Freddie Freeman had a two-run homer, and they beat the Mets 3-0. Shut him out in the, uh, the second game. Nice start for Gavin Stone. It's gonna be a little difficult when Bobby Miller gets healthy and comes back. You know, when other pitchers start to get healthy and come back, it's gonna be, what are they gonna do with that rotation? We'll see, maybe a six-man rotation. Uh, Twins beat the Royals four to two. Mar Manuel Margot with a double. Simeon Woods Richardson with the win, Cole Reagans with the loss. Uh, Cubs beat the Brewers in uh, in extra, six to three. Uh, Braves beat the Nationals two nothing. Marcelo Zuna had a homer. A's shut out the Rays three nothing. Mason Miller with his eleventh save for the A's. Cardinals beat the Reds seven to one. Nolan Gorman two run homer. Red Sox beat the Orioles eight to three. Um, and the other games are still in progress.
So yeah, Duncan, we avoided the sweep in the NBA. So we'll get a little extra Western Conference action. All right, there's Gavin Stone right there. I don't know how he's doing hobby-wise. I know the pitchers don't do as well as their hitters, but, but he is playing well this year if you're a pitcher collector. Let's keep it Ruiz to 100, former Dodger prospect. And a Shohei Otani flipped around. I think these are variations. Nice, Angels edition going to Victor. I'm pretty sure the variations are flipped around. Just in case, we'll, we'll take care of it. Nice. And then we got Hideki Matsui to 10. For a low number here. That's going to go to John and the Yankees. There's Ricky Henderson. That's to 25. 17 out of 25 for DY and the A's. Not sure if they'll be three and two this year. And out of five, Alec Manoa. Who's got the Blue Jays? DY with Toronto. This is worth looking up. This might be comeback player of the year. So we all know of Alec Manoa, how good he was a couple years ago, then just fell off a cliff last year with no apparent reason, maybe a little injury here and there. But he, uh, he came to the bigs, back into the bigs, early May, four innings, six earned runs, and everyone's thinking, here we go again. But the next start, seven innings, zero earned runs, four hits, six strikeouts, no walks. His next start... Seven innings, one hit, zero earned runs, one walk, seven strikeouts. And his last start uh, a few days ago, not as good. 4.2 innings, four earned runs, four strikeouts, two walks, but signs of life. Signs of life. So two of his last four starts, really, really good. DY out of fives and under, train whistle. All aboard the Big Hit Express. <laughs> he's yeah, he's a, he's a big dude. He's a little burly. All right, we got Brian Bale, 270 out of 499. And another auto, Cal Mitchell. It's only supposed to be one auto a box. We got two. Pirates, Ed, we'll take the bonus autos. There's Bryce Johnson to 499. Tariq Skubal. Glaber Day to 499. And that's your box. Yeah, I mean, I don't I mean, pitchers are kind of difficult because they, they don't sell as well as like hitters. But uh, but now you, your Alec Manoa value could be could be creeping up. You might as well hold on to it. See what happens by the end of the year. All right, there are some games still in. Progress. The Blue Jays White Sox game's in a rain delay. Blue Jays are up by up by seven. No, sorry, check that up by five in the bottom of the ninth. I mean, why, why not? I mean, might as well just call that game unless they think the rain delay is going to be short. In the bottom of the eighth in Colorado, Guardians are up thirteen to seven. 
I suppose in Colorado, but a five run lead isn't that crazy, isn't that insurmountable. Uh, at the end of the sixth, the Yankees are up on the Angels three to two. Bottom of the seventh, Astros up on the uh, Mariners two to one. Top of the eighth, Marlins are in San Diego. They're getting shut out by the Padres three nothing. And then top of the seventh, no runs in the Phillies at Giants game. At zeros, but the, the, the Phillies have a runner on at the top of the seventh. So we'll keep an eye on the remainder of these uh, baseball games as we're breaking here. I think that's it for all the the live sports, at least for the the big four, anyway. There's Bill Mazeroski, 329 out of 499 for the Pirates. It'll be for Ed P. We got a Juan Soto to 10. 8 out of 10. Nice low number there. Padres, Gary with San Diego. We got Will Brennan to 150, Speckle. For Cleveland, that's gonna be for Patrick. There's Richie Ashburn for the Phillies to 199. That's going to be for Joseph G and the Fightin' Phils. And there's our auto, Kebrian Hayes. Pirates. It's going to be for Ed P. Judge is up to bat, 280, 17 home runs. He has over 1,000 OPS. Man. Oh, and there are your uh, city cards there. If you're, uh, if you're sitting there at home wondering, What's Mark Gubiza doing these days? He's the uh, color commentator for the Angels Television Network. Tonight it might be it might be uh, Wayne Rondazzo who's doing the play-by-play. -play. I think it's Wayne. Oh, former former Mets play-by-play. -play. Well, you might hear the sounds.
Does it sound like Wayne? Hunter Gaddis to 100. Cleveland has a pretty excellent bullpen. Patrick with the Guardians. A lot, lot of guys who are... We've got three or four relievers that are doing really well. Maybe one of those. Rex's Cubs need, probably needs one of those relievers. Nick Allen, 9 out of 10. Nice low number there going to D.Y. Tyler Freeman to 499 for the Guardians. And J.J. Blade, 35 out of 50, rookie auto for the A's. I think J.J. Blade, who was a big prospect for the uh, Marlins before he got traded to the A's, I think is playing well. He's playing okay. He's playing okay. He's hitting about 237. He's got eight home runs. 15 doubles. I think he's doing all right. Unfortunately, uh, buried in in Oakland, but we got Von Herrera, seventeen out of fifty gold parallel for uh, St. Louis. That's for Matthew. There's Lindor, Mets edition to 499. I guess that's the current edition. He's been Mets edition for a while. John with the Mets, last spot mojo. Hayden Wisniewski. And that's Mike Musina, Moose, to 75. 33 out of 75. I feel like the numbers are kind of hard to see. Kind of in the middle, then up against the other print there. But that's going to go to the O's. That's for Joe. Your city variations here. Here is Beau Bichette. Got downtown Toronto behind there. Nice cityscape. It's for Toronto, DY. There is Jose Ramirez. Cleveland, this is for you, Patrick. Is he one of the, the more underrated players in Major League Baseball? Here's Christopher Morell. Cubbies, that's going to go to D-Y. And more Cleveland. There is Bo Naylor, Josh's brother. Patrick and the Guardians. They're on the same team. Saw a tweet. MLB put out today, yeah. Here's a list of MLB players, 50 RBIs. MLB tweeted out. Number one, Jose Ramirez. Number two, that's the list. He's got to be one of the more underrated players in Major League Baseball. What do you think, ladies and gentlemen? Who are your underrated players of Major League Baseball?
Yeah, next closest is Marcelo Zuna, is 48 RBIs. Anyone in a small market like Chicago? Shots fired, Drex. You gonna take that? Chicago, the number three media market in the, in, in the United States, in North America? I think it's New York, LA, Chicago, right? How about Kyle Tucker? Is that a candidate for, he's got a 3.4 war. Fourth in Major League Baseball, all of Major League Baseball. He's got 18 home runs, 39 RBIs, over 1,000 OPS. And nine stolen bases. 18 doubles. Pretty underrated. On the pitching side, Seth Lugo, yeah, that that was kind of that's that's certainly surprising. I think I think he was what a, a, mi a middle to back end of a rotation kind of guy, and now he's on the Royals and he's looking like really good. Kettle Marte, yeah, he's really solid. Always a guy that I try to try to shoot for in fantasy baseball. He's not like super desirable, but he always. Always perform for your team. Here's a Nelson Velasquez to 150. Jaron Durant's having a nice season too, but maybe he hasn't played long enough to be considered underrated. There's Andrew McCutcheon to 199. Pirates, that's going to go to Ed. Yeah, Kettle Marte, that's a really good one. There's Aaron Nola to uh, 134 out of 100 for the Phillies, Joseph G. And Yusniel Diaz, 113 out of 150, 150, rookie auto for the uh, Dodgers. I don't think he's on the Dodgers anymore. Didn't, wasn't he traded? Wasn't he traded? To the Orioles? Oh, the Dodgers, like, I was like, that was a while ago. This guy was traded to the Orioles in the Machado deal back in 2018. And so I was like, why the hell is he in a Dodger uniform? Guess what? February 2023, Diaz signed a minor league contract with the Dodgers. He spent the season, uh, he spent the season with the double A. Uh, the Tulsa Drillers played 100 games, did okay. And then elected free agency and then signed with the Giants. Minor league deal with the Giants. But still Dodgers edition in 2023. So Christopher with that one. Yeah, it's kind of random. There's Matt Swarmer to 199. For the Cubs, that'll be for DY. He has the North and South Siders. And that, that using Diaz surprised me. He was a kind of a highly touted prospect. Nice, there's Trevor Hoffman, 25 out of 25. Padres, Gary with the Padres, one of the one of the most uh, one of the most devastating changeups that I've ever seen. It was so good that even when his fastball like topped out like at 89, 90 miles per hour, the guy could still get outs. Here's Trout for the Angels, Victor. He still, that guy can still get outs. His arm slot was the same, angle was the same, held the pitch the same way, it was exactly the same. You know, in great control too, he, can, he could dot that anywhere, so it was just like, he didn't know what was coming. He changed eye level enough and speed enough and keep you off balance enough 
be hard to get him. Trying to glance at this list for any other underrated players. I feel like most of these guys are kind of rated where they where they are supposed to be rated for the most part. I guess Isaac Paredes for Tampa Bay. Kind of under I guess any anyone on the Tampa Bay Rays who's performing well is kind of underrated. Will your Abreu is having a little nice little season here? His wins above replacement is the same as Ellie Dela Cruz and Bryce Harper, for whatever that's worth. Yeah, looking at pitching. Yeah, Seth Lugo, second in the league in wins above replacement. He's he's, uh, he's got a 174 ERA over 72 innings, which is a lot of innings at this point. So it's not really a small sample size anymore. And a sub one whip. All time leader in WAR was. Are you talking about? General Patton in both the, uh, the the African and European theaters, outfoxing the desert fox Rommel in North Africa. Zoo? Yeah, those guys are pretty good at war. What about uh, what about Attila the Hun, Alexander the Great? Those 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 are those guys are good at war. There's C uh, C J Abrams to one fifty. Rex who only follows Cubs players saying, I know it's my Cubs, but I, there's other players in baseball, Rex. Actually, you know what? He is underrated, Rex. Javier Saad, 10th best war in all of Major League Baseball, not, not just in the, in the NL. The 217 ERA, he's got 54 strikeouts and 58 innings. It's pretty good, and a 1-1-1-16 one, one, one whip. Here's Byron Buxton. That's going to go to uh, the Twins. That'll be for Barry. Trevor Hoffman to 99. Another Padre. And Brian Bale. Rookie auto for the Red Leg. Red, not the Red Legs, the Red Sox. Different part of the legs. Uh, Jonathan Kent with Boston. I think I actually tried to add a Javier Assad to my fantasy team. Like, yeah, I mean, what are, the, what are the Cubs doing, Rex? Why aren't they getting, like, it's clear that the most obvious problem with this team is, is relief pitching. They got Imanaga, Javier Assad, you know, Justin Steele's putting together a few good starts, right? Ben Brown, you know, and even Jameson Tyon can put together a decent start or two at the back end of the rotation. What are we doing? Why aren't moves being made now? Offense is fine. They'll, 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 fi they'll figure it out. You know, every offense is going to have their ups and downs. But it's clear that, the, that that is the main problem. And yet, they're sitting on their hands. I was just talking about the Cleveland has like three or four middle relievers that are just excellent. There's Johnny Brito to 150. I, I mean, five relievers, like who? 
they're 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 nibbling around the edges, you know. That they're they're just they're picking at a salad, you know. They're that's what they're doing, you know. Get a steak. Get a T-bone steak. What are we doing here? So Oswaldo Cabrera. That's non-winning mentality. Poor Edwin Diaz. Grizz will be saying he's available for deep dish pizzas. All right, there's Cedric Mullins for the Orioles. All right, halfway through. Got about another 30 or so minutes to go. Edwin Diaz, what he did his ACL at the World Baseball Classic, right? Coming off like a pretty historic season. And that's all she wrote. I don't know if he's ever really recovered from that. Which sucks. Ooh, nice. Let's get that soccer done. The Real Madrid Juve combo spot sells out that break. That that case is right over there. We can do it right after this break. It's a lot shorter than this break. Too. It's like 30 minutes. And then we talk about the Champions League final. It's coming up this Saturday. Also, Eric Fetty is third in war for the White Sox, which is kind of wild. Got a 280 ERA and a 107 whip. It's pretty good. There's talks of the Cubs getting me. I, I mean, a team controllable closer, that would be the silliest move to make. I feel like you're giving up way, you'd have to give up way too much for a guy who's going to pitch 60, 70 innings a year at the end of ball games. I mean, if the middle relief can't, can't hold leads, then Mason Miller just sits on his hands. And he'll never get used. You still have to get there. No, I, I think that's just a pipe dream. That's that space. That that's I know I can tell which which bits of news Rex gets from uh, the Facebook groups. That's one of them. Let's get Mason Miller, man. Let's let's we got to trade Christopher Morrell, trade Ben Brown, trade all those guys. Got to get Mason Miller just because we see eleven on the uh, saves column. That's what Facebook groups sound like to me. Here's uh, J.P. Crawford, especially for sports. Going to the Seattle, that'll be for Eric Houston. There's Jose Reyes to 199 for the Mets. That'll be for John. There's Monty Irving, old giant, 100. Oh, and that's rookie Corbin Carroll. Nice, Jeremy for the Dimebag. That's right, this is 2023. And there's your autograph, Leover Peguero, 20 out of 99. Yeah, Dodger GM Andrew Freeman a few years ago famously stated it's like I hate 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 trading for relief pitching especially in the middle of the season because it's always you know other teams will always jam you here's Mason Miller right here will always jam you up for it especially when you know a team's desperate for it there's Ichiro to 50 Seattle edition going to Eric There's Bobby Miller to uh, 75, making his way off the IL. Be a crowded rotation for the Dodgers. I mean, yeah, yeah, well, not just supply and demand just being bad at the trading deadline, especially for like relief pitching. 
Because you know, if you've got it and another team doesn't have it, especially relief pitching, I mean, you can, you can get really... You can get a team giving up way too much at the deadline. But sometimes you have to do that if you think you're going to contend. Now, that's where the, that trade deadline is going to be really interesting. If, um, you know, let's say we get to, when's the trading deadline again? At the end of July, right? You know, if, let's say the Cubs are on pace for like 90 plus wins. You know, let's say they're in first. They're 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 running away with the division. You know, then you start thinking, are we just a closer away from a deep postseason run? You know, then you start. Then I don't know. Then maybe you do have to overpay. Although if they do go on a run, that probably means their middle relief is better. They probably don't need Mason Miller. Right? <laughs> yeah. Imagine. If the Cubs do that instead, they'll be like, oh, let's get Pete Alonzo. So then the Facebook group is like, all we gotta do is get Pete Alonzo. You put him at first, he's gonna hit 50 home runs. We just outscore everybody else. We don't need to worry about middle relief. Yeah, all of our starters, Ben Brown, Justin Steele, Javier Saad, they're gonna go eight innings. We'll be up by seven, relief pitching gives up four, we'll be fine. It's Carlos Correa, five out of 50. I mean, I honestly don't know if anyone outside of like Cubs message boards and like Cubs fans, fan like blogs who have even talked about Pete Alonso going to the Cubs. I don't know if there's any like national reporter that has even mentioned that. That's Kyle Gibson to 499 for Joe and the Orioles. Corbin Burns to 99. That's still Brewers edition. This is 2023 DY with the Brew Crew. And there's Levon Soto. <laughs> yeah. Anyone who's talking about Cubs getting more hitting, I think, you can just you can just block them right away and discount their opinion. There's Mike Mussina, Blue Mini Diamonds. The person who's mentioning Nick Sandlin or Hunter Gaddis as trade targets, you know, then then you've got then you've got a sharp baseball, and then you got a sharp Cubs fan. There's Lefty Grove for the A's, 46 out of 499. Lefty Grove, believe it or not, was a righty. I'm kidding, he was not. It'd be funny if he was. JP Crawford. Blue Mini Diamonds, 128 out of 199, Seattle. Good for Eric. Another box. I got to hydrate a little bit here.
Well, for whatever it's worth, about a third of the way through the season, which I think by now I've, I've been reading more articles on like fan graphs and other, other baseball publications that are saying, yeah, we're a third of the way through the season, like I've been telling everybody. Now it's a little too late to be saying it's too early. So we're at the time where we can start looking at numbers here. Fangrass has a uh, has standings projections, win-loss projections based on the numbers thus far. They've got the Yankees winning 96 games this year. Phillies 95, Dodgers 94, Orioles 93, Braves 91. Guardians 89, Twins 87, so on and so forth. The Rex, in case, I'm sure you're wondering, your Cubs, are, the Fangraphs hasn't projected at 81 and 81, 500 season. Same as the Diamondbacks, Blue Jays, and Red Sox. Game ahead of the Cardinals, Tigers, and Rangers, and a game behind the Giants, couple games behind Astros and Rays. I feel like we can keep an eye on this like every other week. Every couple of weeks we'll check in on this and see how those numbers have changed. And the weather still has not heated up. We're almost in June and Dodgers Mets got rained out. So June, July when the, when the ball starts to jump harder for pitchers to, to go deeper into games because it's so hot and humid in a lot of places. I'm going to start seeing some changes in the numbers there too. Well, Sports Illustrated has, has fallen by the wayside, Rex. Very recently they were accused of of creating AI generated articles and not attributing it to AI. So there's Rollins to 75. So uh, Sports Illustrated has used to be a great source of sports information, but it's been many years since they've been reliable. I would, I would not get my news from Sports Illustrated. 45 out of 50, Zach Gallen for Jeremy and the Diamondbacks. And they, they've gutted a majority of their sports writing staff. They're, 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 they're with a skeleton crew pretty much the last handful of years, which is sad for a previously prestigious publication. It's Harrison Bader to 75 for the Reds. That'll be for John. And there's Matt McClain for the Reds, 17 out of 99, rookie auto for, uh, for John and the Reds. Oh, Taylor Ward with a two-run double. Alex Bregman to 499. Although a lot of people are connecting the dots though, Rex. Like the Blue Jays are not having a good season. So everyone's seeing a lot of guys that are in the last year or two of their contracts. You know, do the Blue Jays want to retool, rebuild with some youngsters? Is the window closed already? So even though they've been trying, there's Frank, Frankie Lindor, Francisco to 99. And Barry has the Astros get that Bregman. Three boxes left. So yeah, I think I think everybody's the vultures are circling, as they say. Yeah, Fangraphs has the Blue Jays projected at 81 and 81, about a 500 season. I 
You got the White Sox projected to lose over 100 games. Rockies, too. The White Sox is a team, I feel like, they definitely have to retool, right? I mean... I don't know who can. I'm looking at their depth chart right now. I mean, who, uh, move Andrew Vaughn. You know, got a .7 WAR at first base. Someone could use an Andrew Vaughn. Nicky Lopez. You know, move move Paul DeYoung. You know, send the oft injured Yoan Mankata elsewhere. You know, get something back from him. So let let that be someone else's problem. Move Andrew Benintendi. Tommy Pham has actually been having a decent season. Move him. Move Luis. Ah, Luis Robert's still pretty young, but he's always injured. But there's a lot, lot of guys that uh, that they they can uh, that they can move. I mean, the worst thing to do would be to let him walk. Obviously, that's 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 the worst option. So then it's like if you if you if you're an executive, you kind of have to figure out what you want to do. Maybe take the temperature of some of these players and saying, "Hey, are you willing to re-sign?" You gotta have a future plan, though. What's your future plan gonna be? Is it gonna be with Vlad Guerrero and Bo Bichette? If so, lock those guys up right now. Get them to sign extensions. out of five Alec Manoa autograph comeback player of the year <laughs> nothing too crazy after that but we still got a few boxes to go and there's an Oswaldo Cabrera to 199 Jose Miranda to 100. Anthony Rendon. Man, what a terrible contract that, that is. To 499. Todd Bradley autograph to 199. Tampa Bay Rays. It's for Victor. What's the vector, Victor? Gunnar Henderson, this is a rookie card. What a season he's having. Brendan Fott to 75 for Arizona. And a bonus auto. All right, we got, didn't we get... Yeah, then we got the Taj Bradley, another box with a bonus, and that's Miguel Vargas. 33 out of 99, a little Dodger Joe Mojo going to Christopher, who got my Dodgers. A little color match. Hit a home run today, first of the season. Dodgers really need some help in that 7 8 9 spot. If Miguel Vargas can fill that offensive black hole there, then that would be nice for my Dodgers. And then he thought that would give Otani some more RBI opportunities and maybe he wins a triple crown and everyone holding Otani rookie cards will be happy because that's another historical thing that he can add to his resume and that's good for the hobby. And then there's Mark Capel to 499. Phillies, that'll be for Joseph G. And we got a Cole Reagans to 150. He's been having a really nice season for the Royals. Capola with that one. Two boxes to go. Oh, I'm 
DJ LeMay is playing his first game this season? Uh oh. And DJ LeMayo with. Oh, no. Warning track. All right, two boxes to go. To, uh, the White Sox game is still in a rain delay. Angels are up by a run and two outs left. They, they might win me a little bit of money here. How did, uh, did Houston do anything for me here? Did they hold on to win? They did not. Ah, oh, they gave up three runs in the bottom of the eighth. What a weird season for, for Houston, but maybe that is the, sort of the beginning of the end of their, their run. And uh, Phillies Giants are still still scoreless in the bottom of the ninth. Giants have two runners on, first and second, no outs. That's a strange game too. Who's on the mound for the Giants? Eric Miller, Eric with a K Miller. Oh, he, oh, they did a bullpen game. He was the opener. And then Taylor Rogers went a couple innings. Spencer Howard went four innings, didn't give up any runs. And Tyler Rogers. Rogers Brothers. Soto's the uh, the last possible last out of this game. Behind on Soto, 2 1. That's not good. Three and one. You really want to see Aaron Judge with a runner on, down only one. Soto flies out. Angels win on a Taylor Ward. What, two-run double, I think it was. All right. Another box. Second to last. And we've got another Miguel Vargas to 150. Hopefully he gets some more playing time. It's, they call him up and there's like got sporadic playing time. I don't know what the point of that was. Here's Trey Mancini to 199 for the Cubs. It's gonna be for DY. Christopher has my Dodgers. Eddie Murray to 100 for the O's. That'll be for Joe H. Corbin Carroll. Rock Reigns to 50. What was that? What was that trivia we got the other day about Tim Reigns? I think he was one of the only five players in Major League Baseball. Um, that has stolen a base in four consecutive decades. I think, I think one in, I think he stole some bases in the late 70s, then through the 80s, 90s, and early 2000s, which is kind of crazy. I think the other guys was Ricky Henderson, maybe Ted Williams. Here's Joey Manessis, 171 out of 199. Victor with the Nationals. And another bonus auto, that's Jose Buto. Rookie auto for the Mets. This case has been kind to us. This is gonna be for John G, last spot mojo. 70% of the time, last spot mojo hits 100% of the time. 
Brian Bale to 499. Tyler Stevenson to 75 for the Reds. And then uh, Freddie Tarnock. 10 out of 25 for the A's. That'll be for D.Y. All right, final box. Good luck. Let's see if we get another bonus auto out of here. Or saying if they sign him, or if they sign players of him? Oh, no, no, sorry. I, I was reading the other day, there hasn't been any talks with the Yankees for the solar extension. The board is saying if they sign him, they'll increase their team worth. Yeah, probably. He's not wrong. What do you think the Dodgers team worth is now? I mean, Juan Soto... A lefty hitter in the ballpark where ballpark that is kind to lefty hitters, and the uh, and the Dominican population in New York. I mean, you might think he's joking, Rex, but he's not wrong. He's not like a double. He's not going to double the value of that franchise, but you lock up Juan Soto for ten years. But here's the crazy thing: Juan Soto is only 25 years old. He doesn't turn 26 until late October. And that's how young he is. A 10-year contract isn't crazy. That only takes him to his year 35 season. I mean, this is a player that you could sign for 15 years. I don't know if Soto would. Soto probably wants a seven-year deal. And then uh, get him to the early 30s and then sign another seven-year deal. <laughs> yeah, well, this year. Previous years, Boris has been pretty reliable. Getting getting those big contracts. Although if it happens again next year, next couple of years, you might have to worry about the the Boris effect. All right, final box, looking for one more auto, maybe a bonus. You think it's collusion? What? Oh, I see, to just not even deal with him. I was gonna say, I don't know, it'd be hard to collude numbers-wise because then someone's gonna be like, yeah, let's all collude to have this player only be $20 million. And then you jump in and be like, offer $25 million, then you get your player, right? So you can't collude specific players and numbers, but yeah, I suppose you can be like, F this guy, I'm not dealing with him. Then I suppose. It's hard to get, It's but it's hard to get 30 owners or 30 GMs to to collude like that, especially when they're competing against each other. If anything, you hope that people keep lowballing them so then you can just come in with a slightly higher offer. I mean, it's a super competitive environment. I mean, I, it's, it's hard to think that people would collude in that sort of sense. So 75, there's Jeter. It's gonna go to John in New York. It just doesn't make sense. Could they though? I suppose so. There's Travis Swaggerty. Ed with the Pirates. Nice break for the Pirates. Got a bunch of bonus autos in this as well. Maybe we'll get another one, but that is it for the autos for now. There's Kodai Senga, 225. That's for John and the Mets. Mm -hmm. 
Stephen Kwan to four ninety nine. Isn't it just odd? I don't know. I mean, I don't think so. Most players don't don't like dealing with. And there's Alec Minota close. I feel like most players always talk to always say, "Listen, I'm not talking about my contract until the off season." I feel like I hear that comment a lot. So I think I, I think the Yankees would love to get an extension done. I'm sure, but but I don't know. It depends on the player. Maybe the player's like, "Hey, I don't want to deal with this right now. I'm trying to focus on baseball." So, it just depends. I don't think it's odd at all. Here's your recap. I, I like all the bonus autos that we got. That was a nice treat. Some low-numbered cards, also great. So, thanks. I think that, that card was flipped around when we go to the pack. So, I think that's an image variation, Angels. That's for Victor. And there you go. That was a full case of 2023 Topps Chrome Platinum Anniversary Baseball. That was Pick Your Team 5. I think we have more in the store, so keep your eye out for more on that on jazbeescasebreaks.com. I'm Joe. I'll see you next time for the next baseball break. Bye.